skills in your hands and the knowledge in your mind. That's all you own. The rest of it, they can take away from you, and they very well might. There are all kinds of people in all kinds of countries, just within the living memory of those of us here, who've lost absolutely everything, and they had to start all over again. Now, you are luckier than most of them because you're young, you've got sound philosophical ideas, you're going to be in much better shape. But what you've got to do is arm yourself with specific marketable skills and knowledge. What's that mean? Well, you've got to learn stuff. And I don't mean the kind of bullshit you get by going to college. That's worthless. <laughs> you've got to read a lot of books. You've got to become expert in not just one thing, but several things, or many things, because you don't know where you're going to land. It's a general answer. I'm not going to tell you plastics. <laughs> but that's what you've got to do. You've got to think entrepreneurially. You've got to stop thinking like an employee looking for a job, like all those other chimpanzees are, create jobs. What nonsense. So that's the answer. It's strictly psychological mindset, totally. Plus armed with skills and knowledge. A lot of libertarians think there's going to be this big, dramatic collapse. And we're going to, be, have to go back to the Stone Ages. Um, what if it's not quite like that, Matt? Could it be something other than that? Yeah, sure. I hope it's not that kind of collapse because, you know, I regret to say that, you know, I'm 66 goddamn years old. And you know what happens? Like Maury Wills, the famous shortstop set, the legs are the first to go, so I can't run anymore. You know, so I'm not looking to go back to the Stone Age. I find it unpleasant and inconvenient. Uh, no, I don't think, I think anything is possible, of course, but even when the Roman Empire collapsed during the 400s, life went on. It just didn't go on so well for some people in some places. That's all. So I don't know. I can't predict the future. I can... I can give you a gloomy scenario from a dystopian sci-fi sci movie to all kinds of things in between. I'll tell you one thing that I really do believe is important. It's that I think that uh, you've got to think, I think Paul Rosenberg was talking about this a little bit earlier too. You've got to uh, find ways to organize yourself. I'm a big believer in Neil Stevenson, the sci-fi writer's concept of files, P-H-Y-L-E-S, where birds of a feather flock together. Personally, I don't have any loyalty to the United States government. Screw them. I don't have any loyalty to my fellow Americans. That's just an accident of birth. And I don't believe you should be controlled by an accident of birth. I'll tell you who I'm loyal to. I'm more loyal to friends, uh, friends that I have in the Congo than I am to the average American that lives five, mi five miles down the street from me in Aspen. Why? Because the people in the Congo, some of them, I'm talking about most of them, they're mostly chimpanzees just like the people in this country are. But the, the people that I know, we share the same outlook on the world, we share the things that are important. Okay, a, a, a view of philosophy that's important. Uh, so I think that that's one of the good things about the internet is that you can identify who your real countrymen are. And they can be from all over the world, all religions, although I'm an atheist, of course, but I overlook that with people that are of goodwill. Uh, people of all races, religions, geographies, whatever. You can find out who they are, and I think the way the world is going to organize itself is in these files, where that's where your loyalty is, that's where your defense mechanisms are, those are the people that you prefer to do business with. So this is kind of a little file, although it's pretty loosely wrapped. I think that's the way it's going to go after the nation states collapse, and they are going to collapse. People like to be organized, people are basically social, so I think it's going to reorganize itself with files. 
I'd read uh, Stevenson's book, Diamond Age. He explains it very well there, and I think that actually is the way of the future. But I may not have answered the question exactly, but it led me to think that thought, and I, maybe that's helpful. Now, Mr. Casey, I have a question. You talked about getting our money out of the country, and I assume that's difficult for someone like myself. Uh, would there be a way to get your wealth out of the country, but not in cash, but rather in buying property abroad? Yes, uh, that is the, incidentally, that's a good point. That's the one form of foreign wealth that as of the moment, I'm sure they're gonna change this when we get an asset tax, but you can buy a piece of property anywhere in the world and wire the money to the seller, or don't do that, wire it to a trusted lawyer and have him handle it from there, uh, get title to it, and that is non-reportable, and they can't make you repatriate that piece of real estate. There's much more I could say about this, but yes. And a brief commercial, this is why, a good part of the reason why, uh, I've been to 175 countries, I've lived in 10 or maybe 12, depending on how we want to define live. But uh, I wound up in Argentina, and we set up a place down there, which is kind of up market. The entrance fee is 200 grand or more for a lot, and then you've got to build a house. But it's probably the best damn place in the world at any price when it comes to amenities and facilities. Because you know what? I don't want to live like a refugee. Uh, I want to have a Gold's class gym. I want to have a lap pool. I want to have a polo field. I want to have tennis courts and, and, and I could go on for an hour, but we've done this already. So that's where I hang out most of the time, because I like it. And Argentina is a really screwed up country, but this isn't a lecture about Argentina, but you know, it's what you hear about Cristina in, Bu in Buenos Aires is all true. And it's worse than that. But when you're out in the provinces, those provinces are run by warlords. It's true. They're different countries. And it doesn't have to bother you. So, you know, that's one crib I have. I have another one in, in New Zealand and other places. But, uh, yes, real estate is the best thing to do. The second good thing to do is every time you go abroad, and you should go abroad a lot, a lot take some gold coins with you. Now, whether it can be more or less than $10,000, this is an iffy area, and I don't want to get in, give anybody legal advice, but uh, always bring some gold coins and put them in a safe deposit box in the right country. It's not, the, it's not England, incidentally, uh, or many other countries in Europe, but uh, that's what you should be doing. That's the best practical advice. Buy foreign real estate and have gold coins in a foreign safe deposit box. Neither of them are reportable. Both of them are intelligent and practical because although there are no bargains in the financial world today that I'm familiar with, uh, those are some real estate in foreign countries. Jeff Berwick over here at TDV is doing a similar thing to what we're doing in Argentina but with a much lower price break point. I would definitely talk to him about that too. It sounds excellent to me. I, would, I could have saved myself a lot of brain damage by just buying something at his place instead of building my own. But, you know, that's water under, over, the, over the dam. So, um, that's what I, I would do. I was going to ask uh, along those lines, uh, so you've traveled the world, why did you pick Argentina? Do you think it has good future prospects? Is it really a, a good plan B kind of place if you had to pick uh -huh. one? Well, to add to what I said about Argentina, once you're outside of BA, and I do love BA, incidentally, and I spent a lot of time there. Uh, look, it was a process of elimination for me, because I've been almost everywhere, uh, and spent a lot of time almost everywhere. Process of elimination. I looked at Africa. If I was 30, and I wanted to make a killing, I'd go to Africa. I would definitely, there's a huge opportunity there. Huge opportunity, just by the fact that you got more money, different experience, different... That, that's a great place to make money right now. And will be for years to come. But I don't want to live in Africa. It's, it's too backward, there's too many problems. All those countries are completely artificial constructs. I ruled that out. 
I ruled out Europe because that's going to be on the front line of World War III, whatever shape it takes. Uh, I looked at all the countries in South America. It came for me. If I was going to go to South America, Colombia is coming up. Chile is excellent. That's by far the best country in South America, actually. Uruguay. Eh, spent a lot of time in Uruguay. Anyway, for me, it came down to basically the Orient, which is really where the future is going to be. I like Thailand for lots of reasons. It was the only country that wasn't conquered by the Western barbarians. It's mellow. The problem with Thailand, which would be my choice in the Orient, is that if you're not a Thai, you might be a welcome guest, but you're never going to be part of that society. I don't care if you marry a Thai. Forget about it. Pleasant, wonderful, like it, was my second choice. Oddly enough, I came to Argentina, which is, oddly enough, completely the antipodes from Thailand. The opposite end of the world. There are no similarities in culture or anything. It's funny, I chose two polar opposites. I chose Argentina. Not because the government isn't crazy, but the government's been crazy down there, and I mean literally crazy, since the 1940s. Uh, but it's an immigrant country. It's more European than Europe, which is a plus. Uh, there's a lot of liber libertarian anarchist thinking down there, believe it or not. It's the most sophisticated country in South America. If you like down at the heels elegance, I happen to like that. I like the wide open spaces. So anyway, it's an arbitrary choice in many ways. But you didn't choose Chile even though? Chile is a fantastic choice. Uh, I didn't choose Chile. I spent a lot of time in Chile. But I didn't choose it uh, because, at least when I was thinking about this, it was always kind of like a backward mining province that could be Argentina but had no class, frankly. <laughs> Beautiful coastline and everything. It's like an island. Chile's actually not, it's, it's like a, an island because it's separated by the Andes from the, and the desert from the rest of the continent. So it's very different. And actually, since Pinochet, who's got a, not that he was a good guy, but he turned the country around in a favorable way and they haven't screwed it up too bad. Lad. It, Chile's an excellent choice, fantastic choice. It's not the cultural mecca that Argentina is. It's, doesn't have even the libertarian movement that Argentina does, incidentally. Doesn't have the sophistication. Chile might be the best choice, actually, at this point, but I like Argentina. Anyway, nothing goes on forever, and uh, I hope against hope after Christina blows up and we have another runaway inflation down there. Who knows? They, all they, have, they don't have to get somebody that's intelligent or good. They have to just get somebody that's not an active criminal. That's not asking much. <laughs> so... Anyway, you know, uh, I've cast the die, I like it, I enjoy it. Come and look at both countries. Uh, and for practical purposes, those are the only two in Latin America that I think really, I mean, all of them are okay, frankly. They're all okay. But those are, those are actually my two favorite uh, places. Yeah, I was going to ask about Central America, if you had uh, explored that. Well, you probably have, since you've been in almost every Yeah, century. sure. I've, I've spent a lot of time in Central America. I was going to Costa Rica in the 70s when... Um, I'll tell you the problem with Central America. It doesn't have any class. Uh, it's the home of what I call the Central American American. And this is a, a rather large group of guys, kind of down on their luck, down on their heels, 40s or 50s, they like to drink beers. They can get young girls that they have somewhat more money than the peasant girls do. And it's full of the, those are the typical American expatriates down there. Uh, Costa Rica has always been the best of the bunch. I'm not sure it is anymore. But it's completely overrun by these kind of gringos. And Panama, that's okay. But they're all okay. Even Guatemala, which you know, finished a really nasty decades-long civil war ten years ago. It's okay. But um, I could tell you stories about all of them. Uh, you know. But uh, they're okay. They're fine. I mean, uh, Berwick lives in Acapulco, which is supposed to be the fourth most dangerous city in the world, according to Foreign Policy magazine. But, you know, it just depends on where you fit in. They're all okay. I'm just telling you what I like personally. Sir. Uh, 